haven't heard of Louis Arvatulo, you will now. If you hadn't heard of Martha Goddard, you will now. Louis Arvatulo was my grandfather. He was a World War II veteran. He was a Chicago police sergeant. He was a forensic expert who authored and co-authored a lot of books on crime scene investigation. He taught in the police academy. He worked his way up to become the chief microanalyst of the Chicago Crime Lab and then later the chief medical analyst for the state of Illinois. He helped on the John Wayne Gacy case where he was called out of retirement to assist. He worked on the Richard Speck case and was featured in Time Magazine as a result. But most notably, he co-created the rape kit with Martha Goddard, a survivor. Martha was working with runaway teens in a shelter when she came up with the idea of finding a standardized way of assisting survivors of sexual abuse in crime scene investigation and justice. She approached my grandfather, who at the time in Chicago was the most notable forensic expert. My grandfather was instrumental in taking her idea and making it into a tangible, reliable, and valid instrument that would be used nationally. Something that would uphold in a court of law. Something that would later help us identify and convict serial rapists and killers worldwide, as well as exonerate wrongly convicted, many of whom are people of color. Well, I wrote a book about him, and you can read all about that, but today I want to introduce that original kit to you. I recently learned that that original kit was acquired by the Smithsonian Museum, so I thought, why not bring the Smithsonian to you? Because I have the original kit in my possession. Here is that kit. As you can see, it was initially named the Vitulo Evidence Collection Kit because it was my grandfather, Louis R. Vitulo, who was able to take her idea and make it into something tangible because of his expertise. At the bottom here, you're gonna see that the copyrights were given to the Citizens Committee for Victim Assistance, which was Martha Goddard's committee. Additionally, on the side, these committees who were in support of this development were also uh, honored on the original kit. Now on the front, you're gonna see that there is information here that they fill out. Once the kit is collected, it is put in its compartments, you know, inside. It is all sealed individually to prevent any cross-contamination. And then there is a tamper seal that they put right here, or integrity seal as they call it, so that once it was arriving to the crime lab, they know that ever since it was taken by this physician or this nurse, and that it was transferred to law enforcement by this person on this their signature right here, and that the law enforcement representative who picked it up, signed for it, put the date and the time of the pickup, they know that on that date and time when it was picked up and the date and time that it was collected and this integrity seal is still in place, it had not been opened, nothing had been tampered with, and no evidence had been cross-contaminated. So let's take a look at what's inside. I mentioned that my grandfather authored and co-authored a lot of books on crime scene investigation, and he taught crime scene investigation to police officers in the academy because the order in which you canvas or investigate a crime scene makes all the difference in how they're able to make a conviction that upholds in the court of law in the crime lab. So once you opened it, you would see the procedure checklist for this collection kit and it has to go in this procedure, this particular order to ensure that there's no cross-contamination and that the evidence is preserved and can uphold in a court of law. So these are the procedures. And then at the bottom, there's reminders, and I'll read them to you. Procedure number one, if any suspicious, moist, or dry stains are noted, remove the patient's closing. Place small items in paper bags provided and larger items in hospital provided bags. Here are the paper bags. And then the, the hospital provided bags will happen at the location. Procedure two, take a vaginal smear using a dry cotton swab and the frosted end slide. Here are the slides. They are in here. You smear it on there and then you close it. You write down what it is and there's a seal that would go here as well. Procedure three, take rectal smear using the second cotton swab and moisten slightly with distilled water. Place the slide in mailer, allowing to dry, then label and seal. 
place rectal swab in second cardboard tube. These are the cardboard tubes. Label and seal the cardboard tubes. Number four is to take an oral smear using the same process. There are labels that are in there. Have the patient place a filter paper disc in their mouth to collect a saliva standard. Once it's saturated and not chewed, cannot be chewed, the patient would manually remove it and put it inside this envelope where the collector would then fill out the contents and seal. You are not allowed to touch the paper, which is very important to avoid contamination. Label and seal. Draw seven milliliters of blood into each of the two vacutainers provided and label. Place four drops of blood on one of the filter discs provided. Allow to dry, then place into the envelope provided, label and seal. Tape the two or, or rubber bands, which there's a rubber band here, but there's also tape provided. You would tape these two together to prevent breakage. There are several of these in this kit. The next step is to collect fingernail scrapings if necessary using an orange stick provided, which I don't have in this kit. Uh, place the scrapings in separate miscellaneous envelopes, label right hand or left hand, plus other labeling da data and seal. Collect any debris, such as paint chips, plant material, soil, fibers, and place in an envelope marked miscellaneous label and seal. Collect head and pubic hair combings using the comb provided. Place the samples in separate envelopes marked head hair combings and pubic hair combings, seal, and properly label. Collect plucked hair so that the DNA is at the root with the thumb and forefinger. Do not cut the hairs. That is in capital letters. Place in an envelope marked head hair standards and pubic hair standards. Add other labeling, labeling data and seal. Give the patient a copy of the patient information sheet. Complete and distribute the release of information in evidence form so that it allows the patient to give the law enforcement the authority to take the kit and investigate further. Enclose a copy of the completed medical report form. Reminders, collect specimens as indicated. Do not fix or stain slides. Label and seal all components. Mark slides with pencil. Do not, and pencils provided. Do not include extra components. Seal the kit with the orange tape at the lower right corner. That's this right here, the integrity seal. Complete the medical report form and enclose. Fill in information on the outside and cover the kit. Here's the medical report form. In this, it's, it has the patient's information, the date and time of the assault, their vital signs. Since the attack has occurred, have they vomited? Have they douched? Have they bathed? Have they urinated? Have they done anything, ch defecated, changed their clothes, had anything to eat or drink? Uh, they need to know this. It has the history about their medical past um, and the pertinent details of the assault itself. It has a physical examination about all the trauma that is observed by the examiner, mainly the doctor or nurse. Um, a pelvic examination, diagnostic testing, which includes pregnancy testing. Um, the evidence tests that were collected, such as the ones we discussed in here, the cultures, vaginal, rectal, and oral. Uh, were they given any prophylaxis for venereal disease? Were they given any pregnancy medication and or counseling? and the signatures of the medical personnel who completed this. The body is the crime scene in a sexual assault. And 43 years ago, there was no standardized way of collecting evidence from a person's body to ensure that they get justice. And right now there are hundreds and thousands of these kits that remain untested, sitting on evidence lockers all over the United States for no justifiable reason. To learn more, go to endthebacklog.org.